uh, in this video tutorial I'm going to talk about basic security guidelines for MySQL uh, also talk about MySQL privileges system uh, how it works where the uh, what is the two-step authentication process uh, we're also going to add a few user with different privileges and test them and see how they can access different um, part of MySQL server when they connect uh, from where they connect and so on the very first thing we need to do basic security guideline is uh, you got to make sure uh, root is not running the MySQL so if you want to see who is running MySQL on the server simply you can use the uh, uh, PSAUX and grip MySQL this will show you if MySQL is running by anybody but uh, root so in this case MySQL is running it the user is MySQL um, in case if you want to change the user is root and you want to change it to a non root user uh, simply you can use the command mysql the underscore user and put the user you have in this case I'll put it back on mysql as it was uh, the other thing is you have to uh, time to time monitor the mysql server see what are the processes that are running right now in order to do that you simply have to log into your server by putting the uh, 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 username and uh, then simply you can use e uh, to run the command online process list and uh, of course it requires password so I'll put dash b at the end uh, you enter your password and then you will see a list of the process so if there are many processes with different user running on this server simply you will be able to see them all here you also need to secure your MySQL connection. Uh, <clears throat> leaving uh, your workstation unattended with your MySQL monitor or MySQL GUI administrator tools up and running uh, might be accessible to other people so they can come and do some, some uh, damages to your database. Uh, use a screensaver or lock a screen machine with a password. So in case if you leave your desk, uh, it will be password protected. Try to use SSH to connect to your database or if uh, you have a secure HTTP connection to connect to your web interface. It's something like um, by PHP my admin. Uh, so try to eliminate the uh, wrong access or the invalid access to your database. MySQL privilege system is always on. The first time you try to connect to the server and the subsequent connection, MySQL always checks these things. First, it checks where you are accessing this server from. Is your host? What is your host? Who you say you are? Uh, your username and your password, and what you're allowed to do. Uh, your c common privileges on that server and. Uh, MySQL does this every single time that you issue a command and this is automatically created when you uh, install MySQL. Now I'm going to talk about the privileges system grant uh, tables. Uh, MySQL system database includes several grant tables that contains information about user accounts and the privileges held by them. So the first one is column, uh, columns privileges. Uh, this defines user privilege for a specified field within a table. So you can even uh, limit the access to certain fields in the table. So X user can access only two fields out of 10 fields in a table. Uh, DB uh, defines the permission for all the databases on server. So you can specify which database this user can log into. Uh, host. Um, uh, these are defining the uh, acceptable host that can be connected to a specified database. So from what host they can actually connect to. Uh, uh, Prog's privileges define user privileges, privileges for store procedure and function. Uh, when you do query and MySQL, you can write actually certain function or certain task, group them together, save it into a store procedure or function and call them within your query if you need to. So you can specify those as well as who can do what. Uh, tables privileges define user privilege for a specific table within a database. So you can actually re ac restrict access to some of the tables in one or many databases for uh, the logged in user. A uh, user defines command privileges for a specific user. So what this user can do. <coughs> 
Uh, I also want to talk about two-step authentication process. Uh, MySQL checks three things mentioned above, like uh, where are you connecting from, who you are, who do you think you are, who are you are saying you are, and what you want to access. So uh, based on that, uh, the action associated with these three things are performed in two steps. Uh, MySQL always look at the host you are connecting from and uh, the username and password pair you are using. And then also, for whatever uh, SQL command you are attempting to use, MySQL verifies that you as a user have enough permission to perform the action on that database, on that table, and on that field. So there are certain commands that you might, there are certain uh, uh, error messages you might get, uh, such as your password is incorrect, user name Joe does not exist, user uh, Joe cannot connect from local host, uh, user Joe cannot connect from local, can connect from local host but cannot use uh, the MyDB database. So these are uh, some of the error messages you can uh, get when you are trying to access based on your privileges. There's some other that I want to show you right now is one of them is like uh, when you're trying to connect to the server, simply you can see it says uh, access denied for user Joe at localhost uh, using password yes. The other one is insert into table that you want to try to insert in the table it says access denied for user again because you don't have permission proper permission to do this uh, you get such a uh, error message well now let's uh, let's try to add a user uh, to our MySQL and uh, see what are the possible way of adding a new user to MySQL so uh, the syntax that you need to use actually to uh, grant privileges to a user uh, is grant so simply you do use grant and then the privileges are a list of things that you can add here and uh, you will define uh, on what database and you can go further and say what table uh, uh, you want this user, the user that you are giving the privilege at this host uh, that identifies with password to be able to access those resources. Uh, list of privileges are as uh, followed. Uh, we have all create user. Uh, uh, give user all the command privileges so they can do everything whenever you do this. They can alter, uh, modify table, column, and indexes on database. They can create databases and table. They can also uh, delete uh, records from a table. They can drop table or databases. Uh, basically drop meaning deleting either database or table. File. Uh, uh, this is usually is used for import and dump data, import and restore data. Uh, index, uh, user can uh, delete or add indexes. Usually we use indexes to speed up our uh, uh, process for accessing data on database. Uh, you can uh, give them insert, user can uh, insert a record into the table. Uh, uh, processes, user can view stop system process. That's what we did with the show process list, right? <laughs> You've got to trust the person that does this because uh, they can see all the processes that are running. Uh, reload is the one that whenever you assign certain privileges to the user and you don't want to restart MySQL, you just want to make this effective right away, uh, you can use uh, reload. Uh, shutdown, uh, just trust the user because they can simply shut down the MySQL server. And then update is modifying record in a table. Okay, to test these privileges, I, I, I try to create a table and create a certain user to be able to uh, access this based on different privileges. Let's go ahead and uh, log into our uh, server. Uh, log with root and then I'll put my passport there. Okay, uh, let's see what are the databases we have here. Okay, I'm going to create a database now. Create a database temp, I'll call it. Uh, then in order to use the database, I just simply go use temp, oh, enter the database, uh, show tables, there is no table, so I just want to go ahead and create a table uh, right from here. I already uh, created the table uh, before, let's just go ahead and paste that one here. I'll create a table with two fields, uh, it's called names, it has an ID which is auto increment meaning it will uh, automatically increment the number of these fields, uh, is done automatically by MySQL. I have a name which is varchar with 41 character and primary key is ID. Uh, I go ahead and insert some value in this uh, table that I just created. Uh, 
so okay here you go uh, so if I just go select everything from uh, names I should be able to see that uh, let's add one more different way of insert uh, since this is auto increment number I can just use uh, either the field uh, like here I just put the name so I'm not specifying the value for the ID uh, but if it's auto increment you can uh, do either of these ways so both values are there so now I'm going to uh, grant access to a new user to this table uh, simply go ahead and uh, grant select access on temp.names a database temp and uh, table names to John at localhost identifying by this password so simply enter this uh, so at this moment uh, uh, just to just to make sure uh, this is going to be uh, effective right away I will run the uh, flush privileges Okay, this uh, forces this uh, grant to be accessed to John without restarting the uh, MySQL. So now I'm, I will go and uh, quit. And, okay, now I'm trying to log in with uh, John. So I just go ahead and enter the password. When I enter, then I will go and say show databases. So I can see only one database here. Uh, beside the information schema uh, because I have only access to the temp right now so I just go ahead inside the temp uh, the uh, sorry use temp I to the uh, database uh, show tables so I can see only one let's go ahead and select select everything from names so I can see all the values there now I try to insert insert into names uh, I want to provide value for name and uh, values is test here you go insert com a command denied by user john at localhost for uh, table names so as you can see i have only privileges to do select but nothing else uh, okay uh there are different uh, I, I will show you some of uh, some other uh, way of adding grant to the user as well uh, so you can have some examples too uh, if I just show you this uh, so you can have the insert on my DB uh, start all the tables uh, to John on all the host this is every host right again you have the password so you can grant all in this case you give them all the privileges on the my company dot employee this is the database and this is the table uh, to John at this domain or this host right you can also do grant all on my company which is database employee as the table to John from this IP address only right so uh, these are different way of uh, uh, granting access to John for different either database table or it can go further and adding just uh, our uh, my company dot employees dot password for instance you can give access to the password and so on you can also uh, run uh, show grants for user at the, any host you want it simply shows you what John is able to do usage on all these databases and uh, uh, host uh, this simply giving access to John to be able to access the database and then here is the actual grant that we give select only on temp table uh, temp dot names our database temp uh, table names to uh, John you can also uh, revoke uh, these privileges if you need to for any reason uh, you can simply go ahead and uh, type revoke privileges on database dot table name from user at whatever host you have specified the user uh, before so I simply can go ahead and uh, add the command if I need to so, we still have that. so I'm going to uh, revoke all the privileges from John let me just paste this command here there you go now if I go and show grant for John, you see the select is gone. Uh, it's always good idea to uh, check the user privileges from information schema as well. Uh, so simply I can go ahead and do this by running this uh, query. Okay, here you go, only usage is there and uh, 
Hi. John cannot do any more select on that database table names inside the template. 